Good morning. Welcome to church. Ephesians 5, 15 to 20 says this, Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Interesting passage of Scripture. One that we're probably very familiar with, many of us. But we need to unpack it a little bit. Be careful, Scripture says. In other words, do not live your life by chance. Don't just let your life happen to you. Don't be one of those people who just drift through life with no plan other than to fulfill their own immediate wants and needs. Why? Because the days are evil. We'll either contribute or we won't. I used to work, I used to work in construction, and, and one of the things that I learned on a job site is that there were two kinds of people. There were people who came, worked on the job, and made things better. They, were, they contributed. And then there were other people who just got in the way. They were either help or they were a hindrance. You never had somebody who showed up and just was, you know, it all came out in the wash. There was, they were neutral. They either helped or they hindered. And, and in this passage, because the days are evil means quite literally that you and I will either contribute to evil in the world or work against it. We're never neutral. So we need to be careful. And we need to not live our lives by chance. We need to understand what God's will is. And, and at the very fundamental, basic level, God's will is to love him with all your heart, mind, and strength. To love others and to make disciples. The greatest commandment, Jesus said, was to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the very last thing he said to his disciples was go into all the world and make disciples. So how do we do all of that? How do we live on purpose? How do we understand God's will and do it? Well, we need to be filled with the Spirit. Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said this, Do not be drunk with wine. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. That's an interesting juxtaposition. And why that particular contrast? Well, it's a matter of influence. Being drunk is to be under the influence of alcohol, which affects your thinking, affects your actions. Being filled with the Spirit is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to affect how you think and how you act. Now, there are three primary ways that the Holy Spirit influences us. One is he enables. He does that through the gifts of the Spirit. When we are filled with the Spirit, he entrusts us with supernatural gifts that we use for his kingdom purposes. If you want to know what God's will for your life is, find out what your spiritual gifts are. Read about them in Romans, Corinthians, and Ephesians. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what he has given you. Two, he empowers he allows us to use his gifts effectively. This is the difference between offering someone else our knowledge, our understanding, and our ability, and or being able to bring to them the unlimited, ever-present, all-knowing power of God into their situation. And three, he directs. Right place, right time. Let me give you an example of how all this works. A friend of mine was in a Zoom prayer meeting this past week. And during the prayer meeting, they felt this very strong direction, need to call someone. Someone that this person that they felt the need to call is not someone that they talk to regularly or frequently. They just felt they needed to call them. They called them up, answered, said hello and pleasantries. And, and the 
person said, why are you calling me? My friend said, well, strangely enough, I felt like I should. I was in a prayer meeting and I felt God directing me to call you. And then they just listened. There was a pause. And then the individual said, you know, I'm really going through something right now that's hard, it's difficult. And I really wanted to talk to someone about it. It wasn't my family. And then they proceeded to have a conversation. My friend was being directed by the Holy Spirit to make that call. And then they put into the practice their gifts of discernment and encouragement. And in the process of doing that, during the call, during the conversation they had, God did something that only he could have done. So, how about you and I start letting the Holy Spirit enable, empower, and direct our lives? Start living our lives on purpose. Start each day praying, Holy Spirit, fill me afresh and anew this morning. Enable me today. Empower me today. Direct me today to do your will. And then pay attention to what follows next. And when he directs, you and I need to follow through. And it could be just something as simple as making a phone call. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our Savior, but you're also our baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that when you come and make residence in us the minute we put our faith into the Lord Jesus Christ, that you empower us, you enable us, and you direct us. Lord, today and in the coming days, may we be sensitive to that empowerment, that enablement, and that direction. And Lord, may we have the courage to put into practice what you have placed into our lives. Your word has promised us in Matthew that, that you know, what human father, if their child asked for a piece of bread, would give them a stone, or if they asked for an egg, would give them a scorpion? How much better does our Father in Heaven want to give gifts to us? And we are coming to you this morning, asking you to, to direct us and show us what you have placed in our lives already so that we can put them into practice, so we can stop living on auto and start living on purpose. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being with us, me, this morning. Thank you for fellowshipping. And just ask you to be with us on Tuesday at one o'clock when you'll be hearing from Pastor Louise. Have a great day.